Bon après-midi, tout le monde. C'est un grand honneur de faire aujourd'hui un discours à uh, Hello Tomorrow. That's all I know about the French. <laughs> Thank you. Nice meeting you. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's my great honor to be here. So let's talk about space debris. Um, as Rick said, uh, maybe you, some of you have watched about the movie Gravity. Um, satellite breakups and all the fragments hit the International Space Station and many astronauts die except one. So this is a story about this Gravity movie. And this is not too far from the reality. Reality is this. Uh, can you take a look at the red dots? Red dots are space debris, which are larger than 10 centimeters. And maybe you can see some white dots. White dots are real operating satellites. So now you can understand almost all the objects in space are space debris. Let's take a look at the numbers. Large debris, the number of large debris are more than 23,000. And larger than one centimeter is about 500,000. And smaller than that, we don't know the numbers. Some people say 100 million. Some people say 1 trillion. We don't know the numbers. But operating satellites, real satellites, are only 1,300. So more than 95% of the space objects are debris. The Biggest threat is they are flying with very, very fast speed, seven to eight kilometers per second, which means uh, you can fly from Paris to London in 30 seconds. With that speed, the space debris are flying. Large debris is around 10 meters, like a bus. So this is a growing threat. Space debris are made of mainly two things. One is old satellite, old satellite. The other one is rocket upper stages. The rocket first stage will go down to the ocean, but upper stages will stay in the space. And the thirdly, the fragments, which came from collision or explosion of these old satellites or uh, upper stages. So these are space debris. There are some more others, like China intentionally broke up the satellite, and those fragments are still flying. And astronauts uh, littered, littered, I mean, threw away, like a camera, spanners, these kind of things. So these are flying. And the question is, these are issues or not? Actually, these are issues. Please take a look at this. Uh, one example is American satellite and the Russian satellite collided with each other, and many new space debris are generated, and these are still flying in space. And these fragments collide with other space debris, no, the satellites. Even the small fragments has enough power to blow up the new satellites because they fly with seven to eight kilometers per second. So, it is consensus in space industry that if we, we do not do anything, we will not be able to use space anymore. And also it's consensus that we have to remove large debris now before it, gets, it, it, before it turns into uh, smaller ones. And the small debris, we cannot remove them. Then we have to shield, I mean, protect the satellite. So that's a consensus in the space industry. But don't tell me that uh, I'm nothing to do with the space. Space is kind of a government stuff. It's totally related to your daily lives. Like a traffic control, the ships, airplanes, even trucks, you know, these are using satellite technologies. Weather forecast, yes. And Earth monitoring, these days, uh, Agriculture, fishing, we use satellite data and GPS, of course, you use that. And more than that, like uh, broadcasting, if you watch the Olympic game, 
you use a satellite technology, and if you do a buying stock, the timestamp of the stock exchange market uses satellite data. So our daily life really, really rely on the satellite technologies. The next question is, who should solve this issue? It should be a government. Today, I still believe government should take lead on this space debris issue. And in United Nations, there is a specific committee to discuss about space debris issue. But the discussion there is stuck. The reason why I know those people, and they are working very hard, but the reason why this discussion is stuck is this. More than 90% of the space objects are from Russia, US, China. And member states of the United Nations are 200. So the bottom line is who, who take lead, who pay, pay for the cost, who can convince the taxpayers. And many countries say these three countries should pay for the cost because they are polluters. But these three countries say, no, no, we contributed a lot to the space industry. So it's turned for beneficiaries. Who should pay for the cost? Who are the beneficiaries? It's you. So this kind of polluter versus beneficiary discussion, once we get into that discussion, this discussion goes nowhere. That's why this discussion got stuck. Looking at this situation three and a half years ago, I had two options. One is just ignore this and let my kids to take care of the space debris issue. Option two is stand up and take responsibility to solve this issue. And um, I decided to take number two, the second option. And I decided to uh, start up my own company. So AstroScale, our company, was born in 2013, May. But, uh, at the beginning, I was told, hey, there's no technology to remove the space debris. And there's no business model. Who is going to pay for the money? And no funding. Uh, by the way, I'm not rich at all. I'm not Elon Musk. Um, so who is going to fund you? And no supportive regulations. And more than that, no public awareness. Because people don't know about this issue. Looking, ab looking at the presidential election in America right now, Trump, Hillary, never talks about space at all. Space is low prioritized in the politics. That's why the budget is not allocated to the space debris issue at all. But when I was told there's no business model, do you think it's a good news or bad news? I felt it's a good news because if there's a business model, there's a market, people are already there and the competitors are there. But if there's no business model uh, right now, maybe I can be the leader. So that's, that's the beginning. But I was very clear, what, to do, what should I do? And uh, one, I have to understand what's going on in space more. We can detect the object uh, from the ground, but the smaller objects we cannot detect from the ground. So we don't know what's going on. And we have to design the cleaner spacecraft. And also, more and more satellites will be launched, but we should not see more debris in space. Plus, we have to remove the dangerous objects from the space. So it was very clear. And I decided to um, you know, make my company sustainable within seven years. I made this slide on the first day and we had a clear two year, every two years we had a clear objectives or uh, goals. And we already passed the three and a half year. So we are just halfway uh, and we are on track right now. So um, we had a uh, funding, we are going to launch the first satellite soon. And uh, we, we already found a business model. So we are on track. And I will honestly tell you where we are. 
uh, we are headquartered in Singapore, and we have a satellite factory in Tokyo. But we are going to open the new facility in Europe soon. So if you have interest, please let me know. Um, created in 2013, uh, we have uh, 27 full-time employees. Uh, we raised 43 million US dollars from venture capitals, and we have uh, two space missions uh, ongoing right now. The first mission is to understand more about space. Uh, we, we will launch this satellite quite soon. And this satellite will monitor small debris density to understand where are they, how much are there. And these kind of data will input to uh, the satellite design so that they can shield, protect themselves from the debris. The other uh, satellite we are developing right now is uh, this debris removal satellite. And uh, we're going to launch in 2018, not, not too far. Um, let me please take a look at this movie. Uh, we will have a dedicated launcher uh, to bring our satellite. And it goes up to uh, around 500 kilometers altitude. And then the launcher will detach our capturing satellite like this. And uh, one of our uniqueness, our satellite is not too big, like 60, 60, one meter. One meter. It's, it's not huge. And uh, this will open up the solar puddle and tr try to find the debris and to get closer to the debris. The uniqueness of a uh, capturing system is we use adhesives, glue, to capture the debris. And three years ago, um, I was laughed because there's no such adhesive which works in space environment, but now we got it. And good thing is the, the adhesive is, is very light, and it will grab the, it will get slowly, slowly get across the debris and grab it. Once we grab it, we will bring them down to the atmosphere and burn it. So our satellite will commit suicide. But since we're going to make a mass production of this, so these satellites are very cheap. Usually, space agency assume it will take around 100 million US dollars or 300 million US dollars to remove one debris. But our solution is much, 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 much cheaper than that, uh, below one tenth. This kind of capability will support new missions which comes in the next decade. Um, more and more satellites will be launched in the form of constellation. Constellation is a flock of the many satellites goes together and cover the sphere, Earth, uh, anytime. So there are 20 or 30 programs of the constellations. Some company uh, launches at hundreds, some company launches a thousand satellites to you know, do the Earth monitoring or to make internet uh, connection from the space. And, but at a, certain percentage of, at a certain percentage of the satellite will go defunct. So go defunct means go out of order. So unfortunately, that is statistically, they go out of order. So, but they have to replace with a new satellite. So it's our time to go there, grab the defunct satellite, bring them down to the atmosphere and burn so that they can make space to replace with a new satellite. So that is one of our business model. So it's a kind of a commercial-based uh, business model. So I'm very lucky to be here in Paris today, and I'm, I can talk to you, but I actually I'm traveling every day. I travel China, Russia, uh, US, Japan, Singapore, Australia, uh, this business trip is a five weeks business trip, and uh, I'm very happy to be here in Paris. But uh, people don't know about this issue at all. Space industry is very shy to talk about this. So I make a speech every day, and I, I'll be on the TV, or I'm in the, you know, I make a panel discussion with the space agencies. Uh, we spend a lot of time on this. So this is the last slide. Um, the only slide I want to remember is this. 
in 1950, there's no space debris. And now, white dots are all the space debris. The only one thing which is different from Earth's environmental issue and the space environmental issue is Earth's environmental issue, we don't know to what extent human beings did. You know, the global warming is happening, but we don't know how much human beings contributed. But the space debris issue is 100% caused by human beings. So it's time to stop. It's time to stop this and, or reduce these white dots. So that's why our generation should take responsibility on this. Lastly, um, if you are interested in space debris issue, please chat, share, talk with your family, friends, please. And please follow us on the Facebook page if you are interested in. But again, we are going to open the office in Europe soon. So if you are really interested, in, just send email to info at astroscale.com. That's uh, one of the, my uh, biggest interests right now. So thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you.